Hello, my YouTube viewers. This, well, this is what many of you have been hoping for. <laughs> From almost day one that I started doing retro content on YouTube, I've been getting requests from people saying that I should do some videos about old, weird Chinese retro computers. Well, the problem is, there just aren't many. I know the Soviets, they did a lot of great stuff that the Westerners don't know about and they are amazing. Like, they made a PDP-11 into a single chip microcomputer and put it in a keyboard. They have allegedly a black market where people can assemble their own ZX Spectrums, which means almost each ZX Spectrum was different in the Soviet Union. In contrast, here in China, we have three types of home computers. Clones, knockoffs, and unauthorized copies. Yeah, I didn't say it was three distinct types, right? But this one, this one's different. This is the TP Smart Computer. And if you look closely, you'll see it say TP805. Now this is one of the TP series, and I can find zero information about it online. There are like mentions about it. And it is said to be one of the TP series Z80 based microcomputer. But the real star of that series is the TP801, which is an exact clone of the Z80 starter kit. That's a single board computer. I also see mention that they refine the design and make the TP803, which I don't have a sample, and the 805, and allegedly an 807, which is an upgrade to this computer. But that's all that I can find about this computer and this series. So I don't know what's the story behind this computer. I don't know the architecture of it. I don't know if it's like a clone or something compatible with something else. But I can confirm that this is a unique case that I don't know any other computer uses. So there's a fair chance that they made a lot of this actually. But this is the only sample that I can get. And in the front, you can see it has a chiclet keyboard. It's is, yeah, not so comfortable to type on. I've typed on a ZX Spectrum keyboard and this is kind of worse than that. It could have been better back in the day, but really I think, yeah. It's not very good. And up here you can see a cartridge slot, which is intriguing. There are two LED lights. This one says HOLT, which may mean that this, ha this machine has a HOLT function. And a CAS, which I think means cassette. And this button says abort, and this one says reset. So we've got a reset button here. Turn it to the side, we see nothing on the left and nothing on the right. There's no disk drives, no cartridge slots on the side, like secondary cartridge slots, no joystick ports. So that's a disappointment. And on the back, well, this is not a disappointment. Well, I don't see if it gets obvious on the camera. This one says cast out, which is cassette out. And this one's cast in. Okay. Get in focus. And this one says cast RAM. I don't know what that means, but I've seen computers with three cassette interfaces. And on those computers, the third one is a control pin, which controls the movement of the motor. And you can see the cassette rim port is kind of smaller. It's like 2.5 millimeters instead of 3.5. And over here we have something labeled expansion, which is an expansion bus. It has pin headers. So that is weird. 
And over here we have printers. Unluckily, the plastic holding mechanism on the side is broken, and this one is also a pin header. And here we have the RF and probably CRT interface, which I presume is a composite interface, I think. And these are both 2.5 millimeter jacks. So I guess we are not doing any testing today. Now this is the power switch. You can see a red stripe here. And here's kind of a problem. You can see that the power cord is cut, unfortunately. I would have to get a new one for that. On the bottom, you will see a badge labeled TP805. It has 220 volt, 50 hertz input. And it's got an internal 502 amps. That's intriguing. Maybe this is for people who want to mod this machine to use a something like a power brick. Maybe that you can take out the internal power supply to make this machine run cooler. Probably. I don't know. So without any way to power this machine or get a video output from it, I think the next best thing we can do is just to disassemble it. But I'm not seeing any screw. There is a piece of circuit board underneath this badge, but no screw hole. And there are no screw holes underneath these rubber feet. You can see this one taken off. Maybe just by the age of it, maybe by someone who's curious to find out whether there is a screw hole under there. So this is kind of a mystery. There are no screws here or here, and no screw holes in the front. So, is it held together by plastic clips? Wait, I see something. If you look closely, we'll see that there is something like a notch here. Something that allows you to grab onto, and there is a fitting notch in the middle of the plastic, but I don't want to just brute force it because this is the only piece of this kind of computer that I have, and I don't want to break it. And by the way, now I'm looking at it, I find this keyboard pretty similar to the TRS-80 Color Computer 1 keyboard. I don't know if it has the same layout, but it's the same chiclet style on the black background. That's interesting. Another interesting thing is that it's got the F symbol over the P character, and an arrow over the end character. Now I think I just have to figure out some way to get inside. 